What's going on, everybody? Welcome back. I am your host, Dave. Joining me here today, we do have Hunter. Hunter, say what's up. What's up? And today we have something very exciting. This is going to be the $300 upgrade for the Creative Energy Deck, the uh, new Jess Guy Energy Precon. Hunter, do me a favor real quick. For those of you who haven't checked out the 100, number one, why are you watching this video first? Go check out the 100. But two, uh, let's talk a little bit about the commander. Just do a little bit of a recap. Yeah, so the face commander we are working with today uh, is going to be Satya, Aetherflux Genius. If you guys wanted to see the back of the commander of Kaith, Check the description for our Patreon link. We are doing the $100 and $300 of every single backup commander over there. So check the link. But like I said, this is an upgrade for Satya. Aetherflux Genius is one, a blue, a red, and a white for a 3-5 legendary creature human artificer. It has menace and haste. And it says whenever it attacks, create a tapped and attacking token that's a copy of up to one other target non-token creature you control. You get two energy counters. At the beginning of the next end step, sacrifice that token unless you pay an amount of energy equal to its mana value. So basically, we are an energy theme deck, and we are copying some awesome things. And if we have the amount of energy, pay it, make that token stay around for the rest of the game, or until it dies, obviously. So, <laughs> but either way, name of the game, copy some cool things, swing in for damage, use the energy. Yeah. I like this commander quite a bit. We've had the opportunity to play around with it, and uh, this one definitely kicks off very quickly and gets super scary. Now, I am very excited to go over your $300 upgrades, but before we talk about those, I do want to at least jump in here. Uh, we have a sponsor for this video. Hey, what's up, nerds? Today's video is sponsored by our good friends over at Evoke the Art, bespoke token series. If you're looking for another way to upgrade your decks, Evoke the Art's got you covered. Their complete set comes with 50 tokens, 45 of which are double-sided, offering a diverse range of artwork and utility. Head on over to zaximusstudios.etsy.com to pick up yours today. You can find the link in the description. Once again, huge thanks to Evoke the Art. Now let's get back to the video. All right, so let's go ahead and dive into this. What are some of the creatures that you threw into the $300 upgrade? Yeah, before we get started, I just want to remind everybody, everything that you see on the screen right now is all of the additions that we are keeping from the $100 upgrade. This is a sequel, like David mentioned at the beginning. So if you haven't already seen that, check the description on the $100 upgrade and see why I added all those cards. But mostly, that was all of our energy package. Now I want to be copying some awesome cards that we can keep around. And that first one is going to be Grand Abolisher. It is two white mana for a 2-2 creature human cleric. It says during your turn, your opponents can't cast spells or activate abilities of artifacts, creatures, or enchantments. Now, I do like this card. Grand Abolisher is pretty solid. I do love how you immediately started off with a creature that if you copy it, it doesn't actually do anything extra. But this is still a really solid include. Well, the thing is, the reason I added this card is because I don't want you guys, and by you guys, I mean my opponents, uh, to mess with my stuff on my turn, because when my deck starts doing things, I want everything to stay around. And a lot of the times, people like to interact when the commander actually does its thing, and it's doing its thing on my own turn. So if I can prevent my opponents from doing things on my turn, we're going to be winning the game. Another include I'm adding here is Port Razor, 3 and 2 red for a 4-4 four, four creature orc pirate. It says whenever Port Razor deals combat damage to a player, untap each creature you control. After this phase, there's an additional combat phase. Port Razor can't attack a player it has already attacked this turn. Fun fact with Port Razor, because our tokens go away at the end of turn, we can continue to create copies of Port Razor and just continue to swing it multiple combats in a row, over and over and over again. Uh, granted, the one copy that's swinging and attacking, if that connects, obviously that can't hit another player, but that's fine. We're probably going to kill one player if they have no blockers. I like this card a lot. Uh, fun little interaction whenever it comes to your commander, because your commander is going to be creating a token that is a copy of the port razor. It actually does count as a separate permanent, obviously, that one being a, a token. So it's going to have free reign whenever it comes to who is attacking. Um, so long as you can continue to get in for combat damage, you're going to continue to just take extra combats. This probably is just meaning that one maybe more of your opponents are just out of the game without a doubt it is going to destroy somebody or multiple people if i can get port razor out on a board that's kind of empty our commander being four mana if our commander comes out turn four and this comes out turn five we are a problem so i like it another creature that i think is going to be a huge problem is terror of the peaks 
It's three and two red for a five four creature dragon. It's got flying and it says spells your opponents cast that target terror of the peaks cost an additional three life to cast. It also says whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, terror of the peaks deals damage equal to that creature's power to any target. That's right. If we can get multiple terror of the peaks on the field, whatever we start copying enters the battlefield and we can deal damage straight to an opponent's face or like I said, if we just continue to copy Terror of the Peaks, five damage, five damage, five damage, five damage. And then that stacks because we have multiple Terror of the Peaks. So people are going to die quickly. I like this card a lot as well. Also, this does add flying, which I did notice is going to be very important whenever it comes to this upgrade. Definitely. You do have two more creatures that I want to dive into. What are these? Yeah, so the other creatures that I'm adding in here just kind of spread what our commander wants to do a little more wide and that is going to be Mondrak and Roaming Throne. So Mondrak Glory Dominus is 2 and 2 white for a 4-4 four, four legendary creature for Phyrexian Horror. It says if one or more tokens would be created under your control, twice that many of those tokens are created instead. It has another ability to pay 1 and 2 white Phyrexian mana. Sacrifice two other artifacts and or creatures. Put an indestructible counter on Mondrak Glory Dominus. There is plenty of ways to add token production into this deck. I just kind of went, quote, the cheapest route. I know there are, like, Ozier Talk, you make triple those amount of tokens. You can also have, like, a Noted Procession, which is, like, a $70 card. Because of our budget restrictions that we're doing for these videos for $300, Mondrak is the one that's going into the deck. Um, obviously, our commander is making a token copy, so our commander is now making two token copies, which is fantastic. Yeah, very powerful ability here, and especially with the ability that you can just like sink energy into it and maybe keep those creatures around too. Super powerful. Uh, you do have one more card here in this last one. Just like Mondrak, I feel like these two cards make an appearance almost every time you do an upgrade. Maybe it's just because of the kinds of decks you seem to get every time that we have a, a, a commander cycle upgrade. You're always seeming to, to pull the, uh, the token theme deck. Um, it's not intentional for viewers at home, by the way. We actually spin at random to see who upgrades what video. I am the token guy, so yes. But... I actually like this card a lot in the deck. It is Roaming Throne, four generic for a 4-4 artifact creature golem. It's got Ward 2, and it says as it enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. Probably going to say human, because that's what our commander is. And then it says Roaming Throne is the chosen type in addition to his other types. If a triggered ability of another creature you control of the chosen type to trigger, it triggers an additional time. So basically, our commander is going to trigger twice when it attacks. It's going to make two tokens, and guess what? If we copy Roaming Throne, then exponentially, this deck is going to get insane. Um, <laughs> if we have multiple Roaming Thrones, we probably just win the game, to be honest, because we're going to be copying things at such a rapid rate. There's going to be so many creatures coming at our opponents. Yeah, I, I like this energy deck a lot. Uh, I had the opportunity, obviously, to uh, to build and upgrade the energy deck from Fallout. Um, this is a whole different animal, and I feel like this deck is just so much more aggressive. It really is, yeah. Copying things for free when you're a, you're just an attack. It's not even deals combat damage. It's an attack trigger, and you have Menace, which is evasion. It's The commander itself is amazing. Yeah, with all this extra hate that this commander is going to be drawing towards it, uh, how are you going to protect it? So that's the thing. Because we are such an aggressive deck, we are target number one very early. Uh, so we need to kind of protect what we're doing. So two of the best protection spells. The first up is Fierce Guardianship. Two in a blue, instant. If you control your commander, you can cast this spell without paying its mana cost. Counter target non-creature spell. That includes any type of board wipe That because our board is going to get out of hand very quickly. Counter that especially for their commanders out. It's just a free counter. It's perfect. The other instant is Teferi's Protection. Two and a white instant until your next turn. Your life total can't change. And you gain protection from everything. All permanents you control phase out. X out Teferi's Protection. I think you all know what this does. If someone tries to interact with our stuff, this is also the reason I put Grand Abolisher in the deck. I want to protect our stuff as much as possible. Teferi's Protection just protects everything. All right, well, I do like these includes. It's going to make your deck quite a pain in the butt to deal with. Um, I see that you do have one enchantment that you've added in for this. Yeah, I did. I added Ristic Study. Uh, card draw is still a necessity in this deck. There's not a lot of it, but 
we are going to be doing a good amount of it with this one card. So Ristic Study, two and a blue for enchantment. It says, whenever an opponent casts a spell, you may draw a card unless that player pays one. So David, do you pay the one? It's one of my favorite lines in Magic. In most... uh, yeah, Ristic Study is one of the best draw engines in the game, just flat out. So obviously I can see why this makes the inclusion for it. Um, and then you do have a couple of lands that you're touching base with here. Yeah, this first one, I don't know why I overlooked it in the $100 upgrade video. We are an energy counter deck. So what way to get counters higher is proliferate. So Karn's Bastion, I guess I just assumed that would be in the precon itself. And I'm surprised it wasn't. It's a land you could have to add a colorless or you could pay four, tap it to proliferate. So if for whatever reason, we're not producing enough energy, pay four mana to proliferate on a turn that maybe we didn't have anything to do. And our final land base, I'm throwing the shocks in all of our colors because I just wanted to speed this deck even more. So I'm adding a hollowed fountain, a sacred foundry, and a steam vents. Like I said, they are shocks, so they enter the battlefield tapped unless you pay two life for each. Hollowed fountain is going to be the white and blue, sacred foundry, white and red, and steam vents is blue and red as well. They're just perfect. Yep, I like it. Make sure that you, you pay for the uh, two life there. Don't actually use the mana. I just want to make sure that, you know, somebody's hurting you yeah play it <laughs> don't use it um so with that being said if we're throwing new cards into the deck we do need to be making some room what cards maybe weren't quite good enough so what what got the cut yeah so once again this is a sequel so all the cards on the screen right now those are all from our 100 dollars upgrade i still stuck with all the same removals i didn't feel like any card needed to come back there's a reason I took them out. If you wanted to see that reason, once again, video in the description below. But the new cuts. So we are cutting a little bit of the top end as well as some kind of not so effective energy cards, in my opinion. First up, Aether Tide Whale, four and two blue for a six, four creature whale. It's got flying and it says when it enters the battlefield, you get six energy counters. You could pay four energy counters, return it to its owner's hand. That's cool. And I get it, it's a big 6-4 flyer, and our commander could copy that. But I like ETB effects a little more than just getting 6 energy. Yeah, I mean, it is a good energy enabler. After seeing this deck in action, I don't think you need this kind of an effect. It does, it, it makes energy so efficiently. I don't think that you really need it in a 6-drop, so I completely understand cutting this. Um, what about this next creature? Yeah, Combustible Gear Hulk is 4 and 2 red for a 6-6 six, six artifact creature construct. It's got first strike, and it says when it enters the battlefield, target opponent may have you draw three cards. If the player doesn't, you mill three cards. Then Combustible Gear Hulk deals damage to that player equal to the total mana value of those cards. I've never liked Combustible Gear Hulk. It's like your opponent will never say you can draw three cards, and instead you'll probably flip over three lands, and then that's just sad. Or you've milled three cards that you really wanted. So I don't like Combustible Gear Hulk and it's leaving. It is a, it's an interesting card. I feel like there's a time and a place for it, but it is also something that I don't really feel works that well in this list, especially as you're trying to like lower the average mana value. If you're playing a bunch of gigantic creatures, or uh, I don't know, you got like Eldrazi theme or something, Combustible Gear Hulk can get really scary. But yeah, whenever most of your creatures are coming in here at like three mana, I'm, I'm just not seeing it. Mm hmm. All right, so I am very excited to hear the reasoning as to why it is you got rid of this next card. Not because I think the card is really good, but it has one of my favorite creature types. <laughs> Overclocked Electromancers, two and a red for a 2-2 two, two creature Lizard Wizard. That's why it's your favorite. It's funny and it rhymes. Uh, it says, at the beginning of combat on your turn, you may pay three energy counters. If you do, put a plus one, plus one counter on Overclocked Electromancer. Whenever it attacks, double its power until end of turn. And whenever it deals combat damage to a creature, if that creature was dealt excess damage, you get X energy counters for X is the excess damage. It only gets extra energy if it connects to a creature and does excess damage. In my opinion, that value there is so, like, situational. I don't feel like it's needed. And... You have to pay three energy for a single one one counter on it. I don't think I want to do that. 
Yeah, this card is really weird. If like if you're attacking with it, I don't think your opponent is going to choose to block this, especially since it's already so small and the payoff for you potentially dealing XX damage is really nice. Um, I guess the one little downside here being is now they're not going to attack you with their 1-1, one, one, but I'm still not saying it. Yeah, me neither. That's why it's gone. All right, so we talked about some of the instants and sorceries that you put in here. Um, what are some of the instants and sorceries that you took out? Yeah, so we are getting rid of two non-permanent spells here. This first one, Localized Destruction, three and two white for a sorcery. It says you get one energy counter. Then you may pay one or more energy counters. If you do, each creature you control with power equal to the amount of energy paid this way gains indestructible until end of turn. Destroy all creatures. So it is a board wipe, very specific to however much energy we just save the creature that has the power equal to the amount of energy. It's not energy or less, you know, that would have been way cooler, probably a lot more powerful of a card. And we already have two other board wipes in the deck. I feel like this one was the weakest of the two. I think Farewell and Wrath of the Skies is a lot better. Yeah, I agree with you. It is a little bit of a bummer that this one doesn't care about that, like, X or less, that it is so very specific. Otherwise, I felt like this probably would have been a really good card. Yeah. Uh, like I said, me personally, when I run decks, I usually just do about two board wipes. I know a lot of people like to do a little extra, so this is the odd man out. Glimmer of Genius is also leaving for three and a blue. It's an instant that says scry two, draw two, you get two energy. That's cool, but for four mana, I want to be doing something else. And we've added Ristic Study in the deck, which is just an infinitely better card draw. Uh, this is just a one-time effect, so it just, for four mana, like I said, not that worth it. Yeah, I completely agree. Engines are much better than one-time effects. Mm -hmm. All right, moving forward, we have a couple of artifacts that are also going to be dropped. Looks like we got three of them. What are these? Yeah, so first up, we had... A crazy amount of three mana mana rocks. Like when I say crazy amount, I mean crazy like five, six. It's really weird. But I'm getting rid of another one. It's coalition relic. It's three generic for an artifact that says tap it to add one mana of any color. Or you can tap it to put a charge counter on coalition relic. And then it says at the beginning of your pre-combat main phase, remove all charge counters from coalition, add one mana of any color for each charge counter, remove this way. No. Just no. It's a three mana mana rock. It's not doing much. Yeah, maybe the backup commander would, would, would make this work a little bit better because she does proliferate. Um, but that's not what the that's not what Satya is caring Ex about. Exactly. This next card is Aether Sphere Harvester for three mana. It's a three five artifact vehicle. It's got flying. It says when it enters the battlefield, you get two energy counters. And you can pay an energy counter and it gains life like it did on your turn. It's got a crew cost of one. There's also a theme in this deck of vehicles. There are some good vehicles. I think this vehicle is not that good. Especially if our commander's trying to copy it, because fun fact, if you copy a vehicle that's crewed, it comes in as an artifact. So it's not swinging and attacking because it's not crude. Um, it's interesting. But the ETB of just getting two energy and then you have to pay into this just to give it lifelink, not worth it. Yeah, it's it's cute. Exactly that. And finally, we are in upgrade, 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 as in the beyond kind of a budget so wayfarer's bobble is leaving it is one generic for an artifact you can pay two tap it sacrifice wayfarer's bobble search your library for a basic land card put that card onto the battlefield tapped then shuffle this card is in every single pre-con i feel like it is a great cheap way to go get land but because we are a bigger budget we have better cards to put in so this is the cheapest way to get out essentially <laughs> all right and then uh you threw those shock lands in here what are you taking out? Yeah, so the shock lands are being replaced with the reveal lands. And that would be Frostboil Snarl, Fury Calm Snarl, and Port Town. I say reveal because you have to reveal the basic land type of each one in the respective color. So Frostboil is blue, red. Fury Calm Snarl is going to be red, white, and Port Town is white, blue. I am not a fan of showing my opponent kind of what else is in my hand besides what I'm playing. It's unnecessary to give that kind of advantage. 
And finally, one planes. That just one lonely little planes here. One lonely planes. All right. Well, is that going to do it? Is that all the uh, the additions and all the cuts? That is going to do it. That is my entire three hundred dollar upgrade for the creative energy deck using Satya as the face commander. Well, I'm definitely here for it. Um, I've had the opportunity to play up against this deck a couple of times. This thing is incredibly scary at just how fast it turns on and how aggressive it is. Um, what are your thoughts on the deck as a whole or the just the commander in general? I am a huge, huge fan of Satya. Uh, we got to play this in our $100 upgrade video. You guys haven't seen that yet, but it's coming very soon. Um, it did some work and it does work quickly. Let me tell you. The ability to have this have haste and swing in right away and making a copy of whatever's on the field immediately, even if that thing is sick, that is such a huge advantage in my opinion. Like, it gets nuts very quickly. And the amount of energy you can produce with this deck is nuts itself. So I, I can completely see why they've added these new effects to get rid of all counters on a player, which I am terrified of. Yep, too bad. I don't think my deck can run any of them. <laughs> um, with that being said, though, we did give you a budget of $300. How much money did you spend? So after all of these additions, including the 101, it is a, a total of $301.72. Now, that is still in the pre-order price phase. So these cards could come down because I did add a couple of brand new cards from the 100. So by the time the actual set comes out, I can almost guarantee this will be underneath 300 bucks. So go out and pick up some copies when you can. Go pick up Volatile Storm Drake first. I have a feeling that card is not decreasing in price. Well, it's already gone down like 20 bucks. So we'll see. All right. Never mind. I will <laughs> happily stand corrected. Um, with that being said, though, thank you so much, everybody. This was our $300 upgrade for the Creative Energy deck. If you do want to stick around and check out the other $300 upgrades, which why wouldn't you, make sure that you like and subscribe so you can follow along with all that. Also, if you haven't done so already, you can follow us on our other social media. We are on Twitter. We are also on Instagram and also on TikTok. On the screen right now, we do also have our patrons. If you are curious about what our patrons see, there is some bonus content that goes up, including the $100 and $300 upgrades, as well as gameplay for that, for the backup commander for each of these decks. So if you were curious about where those videos are, you can go and check them out on our Patreon. And for those of you who already have joined up for that, thank you so much. Your love and support means the absolute world to us. Until next time, this has been Guys and Magic. Peace. Later.